Okay, so everyone's favorite uh, microcontroller is the Arduino, and the Arduino Uno has an Atmega 328P on it. The uh, 328P also comes in a DIP package, and uh, let's see, we are interested in the digital output on port B, pin 5, or the one that's associated with the LED um, that's on pin 13 of the uh, of the Arduino board. We want to see if we can actually program this in a C compiler that we find with MPLAB X. So let's see if we can pull that off. All right, here we go. Um, so I'm going to switch over to MPLAB X right here. I'm going to start a new project, a uh, standalone project like that. I'm going to say at mega 328p like that. I go next. I don't have one of the boards or one of the debuggers available, so I'm going to use the simulator to take a look if, to see if I can make the thing work. And I'm going to choose the XC8 version 2 uh, compiler. I'm going to make the project name at mega 328p version 1, version 2, like that. And I'm going to open up the project. The first thing to do always with these MPLAB projects is to create a C source file. And so I go to other right here. I just do C and a C main file. Call it new main one, sure. Use the default and hit finish. Okay, so the default uh, that appears on here is all right, but uh, there are a couple of things that need to be changed first. Those um, libraries that typically come in here, we don't need them. The one that we do need is xc.h, which is the typical header file that allows for the customization per chip. And typically we need to set this to return zero like that because of the int right here before main, which is part of the, uh, the default template. Okay, so we have a blank or basically empty main function, and we want to fill it with a way of, let's see, uh, we want to make port B pin five, that's PB five, a digital output, right? And the next thing we want to do is we want to say make port B pin 5, PB 5, go to 0 volts, logic low. And then we want to make PB 5 go to 5 volts, logic high. And hopefully one of those settings is going to make the LED that would be on the Arduino board light up and we can step through that to, to see that actually happening. Now, I don't know what the commands are to make that actually happen. So the thing to do initially is to go to the data sheet. So I go over here to the page at microchip for the at mega 328p, and I want the document section. And let's see, there are a bunch of data sheets right here, but I want the bigger one, this one right here. It normally has more information in it, easier to search, we should have all the key terms that we're looking for. All right, so it seems to be the data sheet we're looking for. It's got lots of stuff that maybe I don't understand. All right, um, let me see. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do search for um, port, oh, here we go. IO ports, hmm. Okay, so an IO port, there's some logic, there's a PXN here. Um, IO memory address locations are allocated for each port, one for each data register, port X, so X mean could be replaced by like A or B or something like that. Data direction register, so input or output, and port input pins, P and X like that. All right, I'm just gonna scroll a little bit more. Oh, this looks complicated. Configuring the pin. Okay, each port pin consists of three register bits. A DDXN, so let me see, that would be, I think it's gonna be the DDR, or data direction register, and N would be like A, B, or C, then the port value, and pin like that. Okay, so if DDXN is written to one, then 
the pin itself would be configured to be an output. Good. If it's written to zero, it will be an input. All right. Okay, so then we get to a table down here. And the table is basically saying that if ddx, the data direction, is going to be set to 1, I can then set port to either 0 or 1, and it will be an output, and it will either be output low, so 0 volts, or output high. So, oops, let's go like this. Low will be 0 volts, and high will be 5 volts. And that's direction, so this is going to be 1 means it's going to be output. Yep, output right there. And I can either give it a value internally of 0 or internally of 1, and it will make the voltages go up or down. So 0 will be down uh, or 0 volts, and 1 will be up or 5 volts. Okay, is there anything else in here that maybe is worth looking at? Oh, look at this. Okay, so assembly code example. So we can see that uh, port B uh, will need to be set and a data direction register B will need to be set and we wanted PB5 so that looks like we need to deal with DDRB and port B like that. Well, let's see what else. Oh, there we go. Look at this port B and DDRB. So it looks like we can set port B to be particular values. Now this might be really confusing to some of you. We won't do it like that. And then DDRB, so data direction set to another couple of values. Fabulous. Okay, we know that those are basically the words that we need to deal with. Okay, so we'll go back in here. So make port B pin 5 a digital output. Well, digital outputs in the at mega world are output is going to be 1, input is zero. Okay, so we need to do data direction B is equal to a binary number and we're going to make all of the port B uh, pins, we're going to make them all outputs. Okay, so we're going to go um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So every one of them is going to be an output. Next, we want port B to be equal to 0B, and we want PB5. So we want them all to be logic low. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's all been set to low. And then we want port B is equal to binary. So bit 7 is going to be low. Bit 6 is going to be low. But bit 5, we want it to be high. Then 4 is low. 3 is low. 2 is low. 1 is low. And 0 is low. And that's it. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to compile, see if it compiles. Yes, it does. And now I'm going to hit the debugger and see what happens there. And it recompiled it. And um, initializing simulator, user program running, and I forgot to put a breakpoint. Okay, so I'm going to stop that, put a breakpoint there, and rerun the debugger. Okay, so we're going to do this, see if it's going to actually work. And I hit the breakpoint. Good. Okay, so uh, we would need to go to Window, Simulator, IO Pin. Whoops. IO Pin. And we want, oh, here we go, PB5. Yeah, that was the one we wanted, right? Okay. It is currently set to digital input with a value of zero, and I also want um, where is it? Ah, oh, there we go. Debugging and I/O view. Okay, there we go. So I want to look at port B, and there's port B right there. So I've got two different views of port B. I've got the complete port B right there, and I've also got the specific one for port B five like that. Okay, so. Now I'm going to scroll that a little bit. I'm going to look at my breakpoint. It's set right there. DDRB is there. If I just uh, highlight over uh, or s sort of toggle my cursor over, then you can see it's got an, a value currently of 
0. I'm going to step. You can see the DDRB changed. All of those bits went high. And take a look here. And sure enough, they all went high. The hex value is FF, which means all of them are 1 in binary. All right, so port B is now going to be switched. It's going to be cleared. Oh, it stayed cleared. All right, digital output is its mode. That's good. It had been changed, and it's still the value of 0. I switch over to the next step. I'm going to set port B5 to a logic of 1. And sure enough, D out, value 1 just changed, and you can see that it lit up right here as well. So my code in simulation, looking at the um, values of the registers and the register bits, show that the code is working like I hoped it would. Now I actually have to confirm this using an actual board with an actual LED, but so far, it's looking pretty good that I have digital output. I also have values changing between 0 and 1 on that digital output. And uh, I can see that it is set to digital out mode. So that confirms things in a way that would be difficult to verify otherwise on the actual piece of hardware without debugging tools.